I'm not gonna do some annoying thing where I make you wait around to the end of the video to do a big reveal. I'm just gonna say, I've been using sugar, white sugar, <gasps> solely as my sports drink to fuel my training for the last couple of years. So I'm gonna go into why I think that is good and my rationale behind it. So before I get into it, I'm gonna be chatting about Beta Fuel and Morton in this video. And if you use those products and you can firstly afford them, but you also like the taste, just keep using them. They're good products, they work really well. So if you've been using them, stick with it. But if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, I'm gonna run you through the three things which make those products good and then compare them to sugar. So let's get into it. The first thing that makes Beta Fuel and Morton good is that they're not too sweet. So they're designed to be uh, used in an 80 gram per bottle formulation. Obviously, if they were too sweet or had too much flavor, that would be disgusting. Like if you went to the supermarket and bought a tub of Gatorade and mixed it up to be 80 grams in a 600 ml bottle, it would taste disgusting, it's too sweet. So that's the first thing. The second thing is they have this ideal ratio of glucose to fructose to make sure that you can absorb that upper limit of 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, you know, that range of carbohydrates per hour. So on the Beta Fuel website, if I go onto it here, we can see Beta Fuel, they're going on about this ratio, 1 to 0 0.8. Uh, there was all these uh, articles that came out in July. Uh, so Beta Fuel reformulated this year, 2021 in July. They moved from a 2 to 1 ratio or, a, or a, in the, you know, in this, uh, as it's stated here, uh, from a 1 to 0 0.5 ratio to their new formulation, which is 1 to 0 0.8. Uh, maltodextrin, which is just gluc uh, glucose, and then to fructose. So that's the ratio that works well. Now, back on the beta fuel website, just bear with me while I go through this. So they quote all these different things from this study called O'Brien et al. So this, on the European site, is the reformulated version of 1 to 0 0.8. On the Australian website, if I was gonna buy it, they still have this version, which is the two to one, the old the old formulation. But what I don't quite understand is that O'Brien study that they're quoting here, where they got this ratio from, which apparently made them reformulate the formula in 20, uh, uh, this year. This uh, is this study here, O'Brien et al. This, uh, Fructose maltodextrin ratio, I'll put the link below. But this is from 2013. So why are they still selling or were selling a formulation of two to one when the study that they're referencing saying, which is the new formulation, came out in 2013? So that's, I mean, I don't get that. Maybe someone has an explanation for that. But I'm going to show one graph in this study, which is down here. Let me get there. It is comparing what it does is it charts the glucose to fructose ratio on the bottom. So they in this study, they tested three ratios, a 0 0.5, a 0 0.8, and a 1.25. Now the, the 0 0.8 is the new beta fuel formulation. And then what we're looking at is this curve here, composite oxidation efficiency. So a higher number, the better. Higher number means your body's able to burn more of it per hour, uh, uh, per minute. So the two formulations, the, the three they tested here, here, and here, higher the better. So they, they found that somewhere between 0 0.8 here, this dot, and I, you can kind of see it goes up a little bit and sort of to here. This area is ideal. Now, what is this value where they're getting this high, this high bit is 1.0. Now, to, to show I'm not just pulling it out, out of my butt, let me go to the last sentence of the conclusion and that says, therefore, oral carbohydrate formulations containing a maltodextrin to fructose ratio of around 0 0.8 to 1 may provide the most practical benefit. So, in summary, you need a ratio of glucose to fructose somewhere around 0 0.8 to 1. The third thing that makes them good is that they have little or no electrolytes. So, beta fuel actually doesn't have any salt or electrolytes. Back on their website, Ingredients, maltodextrin, fructose, flavorings. No electrolytes. Morton, on the other hand, they have a bit of electrolytes, so 200 milligrams of sodium per serve. Um, sodium chloride, which is just table salt, sodium al alginate, which I think is like a preservative. Um, so yeah, bit of sodium, beta fuel, no sodium, no electrolytes. So that's the third thing. 
Now, two other things I want to show you now hi, that, that you might bring up. So Morton used this whole hydrogel thing. That's their, their marketing spiel. So they say that it enables a smooth transportation of the drink through the stomach, blah, 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 less GI distress. Okay, well, is that true? Does that actually help? Uh, the study I could find on it, carbohydrate hydrogel products, uh, do not improve performance or gastrointestinal distress. Now, from what I can tell, hydrogels don't do anything. And beta fuel also doesn't use a hydrogel um, in the product. So the whole hydrogel thing, I think we can kind of put that to the side because it's probably not a big deal. Um, and then the other one which people might bring up is this whole isotonic thing. But really, isotonic being um, the, the ratio of the sugar and salt to the ratio of uh, to, to water in the drink. So is it isotonic? But if you're mixing your own drink to a similar um, carb to water ratio as these products, they're gonna have a similar isotonic, uh, a similar tonicity. And plus, by the time you, like you're dumping it into your stomach, which already has fluid and stuff in there, fluid and food, and then you eat something on your ride. I'm not convinced that the whole isotonic thing is really that important. So I'm just gonna put that one to the side. So three things. Now, sugar, let's go. Three things, is it too sweet or flavored? Sugar has no flavoring, so it's not overly flavored. And okay, sugar is a little bit sweeter than maltodextrin, but fructose is also sweet. So a maltodextrin fructose mix versus sugar, I reckon they'd be, sugar might be a little bit sweeter, but not a big deal. So ticks that box. Second thing, ratio of glucose to fructose. So sugar, which is sucrose, is a glucose and a fructose molecule bonded together, so that's a one-to-one -one ratio. And remember this study, if we go over here, the ratio that they said was optimal was between 0 0.8 and one. So tick, sugar hits that. Third thing, the electrolytes, little to no electrolytes, sugar has no electrolytes, ticks that box. So I think sugar is the ultimate cheap alternative to beta fuel. Um, yeah, I've been using it for the past years. I've been using it in races, like 100 grams an hour, using it as if I was drinking beta fuel, haven't had any GI issues, I've performed well, it's really been great. Um, I don't really have much else to say on this issue. I guess there's two other things that people might bring up, so that could be seen as negatives, I guess. So the whole sweetness thing, um, I kind of mentioned that a little just before. I don't think that's a big deal because the those... I've mixed 80 grams according to the serving size of beta fuel. If you put 80 grams of sugar in a bottle, um, in a 600 ml bottle, it's not that sweet. I think it tastes fine. And then the other thing is maybe the GI won't be as high because more um, maltodextrin is higher GI than sugar, but not by much. I think that probably comes out in the wash and probably doesn't make a big deal. So yeah, when I'm going for a ride, it's really simple. I chuck the bottle on the scales. Now, if I'm going for a two hour ride, let's say, uh, I'm not doing, you know, max is on maximal effort session, so I want to hit just about 60 grams an hour. I'll pop the bottle on the scales, scoop a Powerade in for flavor and a little bit of electrolytes, and then I just pour the sugar in until I get to two hour session, 60 grams an hour, until the scale says 120 grams, and I'm good to go. And I know that if I leave the house two hour ride, if I get back and I finish that bottle, then I fueled well. My session will be high quality. I'm going to recover better for the next session. So um, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, I know other people on the inter internet have been using sugar. Some of the riders on Neurocontinental have been using it. So I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Has anyone tried it? Let me know. If you haven't tried it, uh, I think it's worth a try. Nothing to lose. If it doesn't work for you, then just go back to your other products. But given how cheap it is and that really it ticks those three key um, boxes, I think it's worth a try. Uh, nothing really to lose. So yeah, let me know. I'm interested to hear what you guys, uh, your guys' experiences down in the comments.